Oh yes. The spawn and the kobolds and the... <coughs> Well, um, one of the things we did is we finally got our um, background. Oh, wow, I see. <laughs> going with a fully painted background, but that's going to come in the summer. But um, we actually have uh, three layers for the background. And uh, let's see. But um, So we had the first page. I um, did a lot of internal reworking um, this time around. So I did a um, major rework on the event spawning system, and some major rework on the animation system, and some big rework on the um, combo component to make it work with the game changes. Okay. And so, um, because the big, one of the big features is I finally added jumping. So the pickle and jump? Mm-hmm. But the, um, you know, the difficulty comes in the fact that we have a 2D game, yeah. and so we have an X and Y coordinate, but we don't have a Z. <laughs> so Z has to be emulated inside the Y coordinate, and it provides problems. So um, what, what we changed a bit is that, um, this little shadow is the actual player now. And so I had to um, change a bunch of stuff. So, um, you know, the shadow has the player component, which, um, and it references a player sprite, which is what this guy is. Uh -huh. And so, um, <coughs> so each time the engine you know, draws, it'll move this guy on top of there. And so they're actually two separate things now. Right. This is, this is, um, the, um, the pre-work for the character selection, and so um, you'll end up just swapping out the sprites when we get the character right. selection. So I'm getting the framework down for that. And um, the combo component now works there. It's now with him. And um, this guy, he has, um, since he's an animated sprite, he has the new animation component. And this one, I specify the animations. Um, Torque Builder lets you um, see all the different animations you define, and I get to add a name to it. And so what um, my classes will now do, will it'll um, when the player component is first created, it finds um, this guy, and it saves a reference to the animation component on it. And so it, it, the animation component has a public method, you know, do animation. And I can specify a name, so like do animation walk, and I'll search, there's walk, and I'll display a walk. And so that, that lets me play animations um, easily throughout it, all of my components. So right now you use 11 animation types or 11 animation components? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we can just you know, add animations. We just add a name, animation, click the add button. And so that's what I do. <coughs> so um, I have added, you know, some jump, jump start, fall, and jump land. That's a jump fall versus a jump land. Well, what happens when you jump, for it'll do the jump start all the way up until you get to the top. Oh, and, and so it'll start, start to fall, fall. Okay. jump fall, right, and then right, jump right, land. Yeah. And also have a fall and a fall land and a fall stand. And so um, we got. So if they hit you in the air, you'll fall and stand back up. It looks pretty neat. I'll show you. And um, see, one of the other things I've added is I've added CS script. You ever heard of that? No. It is, it's actually a very interesting project. They've yeah. basically created a scripting language around C Sharp. And, um, so it's like JavaScript? It, no. The thing is, is that when the program loads it, yeah. see, um, you can use it as like a normal scripting language. Um, you know, right click it in the Windows Explorer and you can run the script. Or else you can use it as a host in, in a host environment, which is what I do. In this case, it, le it reads the script compiles it as, you know, normal, you know, C-sharp code and stores it in the project. Well, hold it. Is it, it does it look like C-sharp code? Yeah. But then it's not a scripting language. It's an interpreted language. It's just well, an interpreted yeah, yeah. C-sharp. But um, I don't know if it's... Sort of. It well, actually compiles it, which is, uh, I think... But, well, um, I, but I guess I'm just confused. I mean, you, couldn't com you could mm -hmm. not um, compile arbitrary scripting language into C... Into C sharp, you know, unless it was in some sense C sharp. Yeah, but um, well, what it does is it um, 
it runs it through the, um, you, you know, it's uh, compiled on demand. Yeah. You know, and uh, it sticks the script into that, grabs code out of that. And um, you can actually um, change the scope. Uh, I don't know if scope's a good word. But um, it defaults for the script has full access to your program. So I have, you know, I have full access to all of my... Does um, it have access to the source or does it have access yeah. to the bytecode? No, oh. I mean, this is this is usually compiled down to .NET bytecode. Oh, yeah, yeah. This will be compiled .NET bytecode. But um, as this, I can um, this code acts like it's a part of my project. It can it can see all the classes and see all the namespaces, and so. Um, and this is the C script. Yeah. All right. So it's it's, it's not C. It's C sharp. The mm -hmm. fact that they call it C script is C sharp. It's probably it's probably just as a different protocol for how it's compiled. Yeah. It's um. It probably just uses all just-in-time compi compilation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's, um, from what I've read, it's mainly only C sharp, but you can use other .NET languages. So um, I really need to look into it more because it's kind of confusing. It's not like a, it, it's not like it reads it and then uh, just executes the script and runs it. But it actually compiles it as into your program, and so this actually be, I'm pretty sure that once this is compiled, I can actually access this class from any of my other files. But, um, so is the what's the advantage to this? Um, the advantage... Faster turnaround? <laughs> well, it's a, um, it's a way to segment different things. I can apply logic to... Um, so, this is... Um, let me go back to the scene. This guy right here, he's actually he has a scripted component. So, um, I have a script on trigger component. Basically, when I get in range, it'll um, send this event out to Torque and this this component will catch it and run the script and so it'll, so it'll run the script it's so I don't have to make a giant file of every single scripted event in the game I can segment it among many files and um, well could you do that in C sharp? I guess I'm trying to say what's the advantage of doing it in this scripting language versus in C sharp? it's um... I don't need... well you can actually change it outside of um, the program. I can so, change so the script. So it's more flexible. Yeah. So, so you don't have to statically compile and load it. Yeah. That's, that's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, it, it, it exists as the um, C sharp file, and the game will will actually load it, compile it, and then. But um, so so we added that, and um, so I added the little, uh, the scripted spawn event, and so when he first sees them. You'll play an animation, say a specific phrase, and um, then he will send out another event that starts the spawning, okay. guys. And so, um, I'll show you right now. I don't really like games, <laughs> so <laughs> so um, so you're not going to get a lot of admiration from me on the nature of the game because I don't really like games. 